Hi guys, here we go with our video 4.2, Ionic Bonding. So yesterday we took a look at what the different types of bonding are. Now we're going to go more in depth about Ionic Bonding. And the first thing that's important about Ionic Bonding, or the thing to really remember, is the concept of trading or swapping or giving away electrons. So in ionic bonding, atoms, certain atoms tend to gain or lose electrons to form ions. And then these ions are strongly attracted to one another, kind of like magnets. And the goal for these atoms is to gain or lose enough electrons to form a stable octet. Now, the, as we know, metals tend to lose electrons and form positive ions. All right, so here's sodium and it loses its valence electron, right here's its valence electron, it loses it and forms a sodium ion which has a charge of plus one. Nonmetals tend to gain electrons and form negative ions. So here's a chlorine, right, it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven valence electrons, and it gains an additional electron and forms a chloride ion, a negative ion. Ionic compounds, usually a metal combined with a non-metal, and by usually, I mean pretty much always. All right, so let's look at some examples, All right? Sodium. So if we have sodium gives an electron to chlorine, right? chlorine has seven valence electrons, sorry there's my L, seven valence electrons, sodium gives one to chlorine, and we end up with Na plus and Cl minus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now the sodium has, it's gotten rid of that one valence electron. Chlorine has gained one to have a total of eight. And now, since this is positively charged and this is negatively charged, they are stuck to one another. And there's a, there'll be like a whole bunch of them together. It looks kind of like in the picture here. If you have a sodium and a chlorine, 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 it makes this crystalline type structure. And imagine getting a whole bunch of strong magnets and throwing them in a pile together. Getting them apart is really, really difficult. The forces between these are so strong that it takes a lot of energy to break them apart. And that's why they have a high melting point and boiling. Lithium and bromine, right? Lithium has one valence electron. Bromine has seven. Got room for one more, so lithium says, here you go. And we end up with Li plus and Br, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Sorry about my handwriting, minus. And same as with the sodium chloride, they stick together. Okay. Magnesium, Mg, two valence electrons. Chlorine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And has room for one more. So magnesium says, here you go, and gives that one more to chlorine. But now the magnesium still has another valence electron. So along comes another chlorine. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, with room for one electron. The magnesium says, here you go. And now we have two chloride ions. Cl, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Minus. Here's our magnesium. Two plus, and another Cl. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, minus. 
So we have two minuses and two plus and one two plus and they cancel out to zero. Finally, calcium and oxygen. Ca one two, oxygen one two three four five six. It has spot four. Two more. Here you go. One, and here you go. Two. So now we have Ca two plus. O one two three four five six seven eight two minus and even Stephen they're equal. All right, question time. What is an ion? When a metal forms an ion, what's the charge? When a non-metal forms an ion, what's the charge? All right, these by now we should definitely know. We should have it down pat by this point. All right, that brings us to the end. See you guys in school.